Okay, good afternoon, uh, everyone. It is my uh, great honor to have the opportunity to uh, be here, introduce my uh, recent work, and I will thank all the organizers uh, for making this uh, nice workshop happen and also inviting me. And uh, my name is Chi Liu from uh, Shen, uh, Southern University of Science and Technology uh, in the city of Shenzhen, the south uh, of China. And this is only an uh, 11 years old university but very uh, active. And if you, uh, in the future you want to visit this university or visit Shenzhen, please just uh, uh, let me know. So the topic today I want to discuss about is a spin crystalline uh, group in magnetic materials. And if you are interested in the, uh, this work, and please refer to these uh, references. OK, so since I'm a new guy actually in uh, spintronics, I would like to just uh, uh, list some of my uh, previous uh, careers. and. Uh, uh, also, since my name is a uh, Chinese name, basically it's not easy to pronounce or easy to remember. I just want to, to get some uh, private connections to the uh, spintronics to, to get you the correspondence of my name and my work because I, I chat with somebody. Uh, of, although I'm a new guy here, uh, there were some works uh, of my uh, as are already known by uh, some of you. I think this, uh, this, this work, uh, Hidden Spin Polarization, it's uh, first brought it by uh, 2013 or 14. The basic concept is that the spin polarization induced by a uh, spin of coupling is actually a local effect. It's cl uh, closely related to actual local symmetry breaking because the spin of coupling is actually a uh, 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 local relativistic effect anchored on the atomic size. And given that happen if you have a high global symmetry, you still have some kind of spatial distributed spin polarization. That's why we call it hidden spin polarization or spatial distributed uh, spin polarization. And uh, the concept actually is first brought about uh, 2013 when I was in Northwestern and in 2014 when I moved to Boulder with uh, Professor Ark Zunger. We formulate all the symmetry arguments of this uh, to make it more uh, general. And recently when I became an uh, independent PI, we also did some works on this uh, interesting effect with different new materials including this bismuth oxygen iodide and this uh, famous antifragmatic copper manganese arsenide. And uh, we found that hidden spin polarization in this material can lead to very interesting uh, high order uh, effect. For example, the non-reciprocal, non-linear uh, uh, non current. And we can use that type of current to detect the new order of this uh, uh, material. OK, so let me pull back to the main topic of this uh, talk. So this talk is about uh, spin group. And I will first give a, a brief introduction, and I think and Libra has already gave a nice introduction of this uh, uh, spin symmetry in the morning, and also some features of spin point group and spin space group, and then we'll explore some uh, application of this uh, spin group in the uh, topological phase of matter, which includes two things. One is uh, crime degeneracy and zeta topophysis, and another is uh, uh, a proposed uh, Dirac and metal, but with chirality. OK, so we know symmetry plays a key role in condensed matter physics. And all the symmetry properties are actually encoded in group theory. So different materials, we use different groups to uh, describe them. And for example, if we have non-magnetic material without spin of coupling, we just use the 230 basic space group. And if we add spin of coupling by, sorry, OK. By adding this uh, uh, spin of coupling term, it <laughs> spontaneously breaks the SU2 spin rotation symmetry. And we have to use the uh, uh, double value representation to represent the spin one half Fermi's, which is called double space group. And then if we add magnetic order, uh, we have further add this term. And uh, we have introduced one more uh, symmetry operator, which is the time reversal to reverse the, 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 the magnetic moment as well as the spin operator. And then the double space group becomes magnetic double space group. So now we notice that there is uh, one remaining quadrant in this uh, uh, diagram. That is, if we have a magnetic order, but without spin of coupling and Hamiltonian, is, the, the Hamiltonian is, looks like this. So what kind of uh, symmetry description of, of, of this guy? So it is not so straightforward because all the above mentioned uh, space group or magnetic space groups cannot fully describe this kind of uh, Hamiltonia. Let me show you why, why is uh, this case. 
So we just did some symmetry considerations in the magnetic materials, and I remind you that when we are talking about a system has certain symmetry, we means what, what, what do we mean? We means that we put the symmetry on this Hamiltonian, we get this Hamiltonian invariant, right? So we just uh, consider a spin up company Hamiltonian and put some uh, symmetry uh, operations on this Hamiltonian. For example, if we put a lattice uh, rotation on this Hamiltonian, and at the end of the day, after some simple math, we can find the transformed Hamiltonian do not have the same form with the original one. But if we have the lattice rotation together with a spin rotation, which has the same axis and same rotation angle, and we can get the same Hamiltonian, which is equal to the original one. So that is why when we dis discuss smell coupling Hamiltonian, a general smell coupling Hamiltonian, we have to uh, completely lock the spatial rotation and spin rotation. And similarly, we can do the same things if we put the symmetry operations on this uh, uh, magnetic Hamiltonian, this, uh, this is just a single uh, electron mean field magnetic Hamiltonian, and we can find the same thing to put different uh, symmetry uh, operations on this term. And we will find, let me just show you the results, we will find actually the symmetry requirement is not that rigorous as that's the case of the spin of coupling Hamiltonian, which means the spin group can allow some operations with spin rotation operators detached with spatial rotation operators. So let me do this compar comparison of these uh, uh, four quadrants. For non-magnetic and non-spin of coupling case, the degree of freedom lattice and spin are completely locked because the Hamiltonian even do not explicitly contain the spin operator, right? So if we add the spin of coupling term, the lattice and spin becomes completely locked, as we just proved before. So the last quadrant, the spin space group means the lattice and the spin are neither completely unlocked nor completely locked, but it's kind of partially locked. So that's, that, that, that makes why spin group very uh, special and interesting because it contains a lot more uh, group elements than the uh, conventional uh, magnetic group or, the, or, or, or space group. Okay, so the original works about spin group symmetry is actually brought up firstly in, I think, 1960s by these uh, two works when they uh, consider the uh, multiple fold degeneracy of spin wave spectrum of a Hasbrook Hamiltonian. And they found that only an enhanced symmetry group, not a magnetic group, an enhanced symmetry group can describe the, the, all the degeneracies of this Hamiltonian. So they named it a spin group, which consider the key. The key point of spin group is considered spin rotation and spa ro spatial rotation separately. Let me give you an example. So we consider this very simple AFM spin arrangement. Okay, so uh, let me consider the question that does it have a C2 rotation in magnetic group? The answer is, is no. So because if we just give a pi rotation of the lattice degree of freedom, the spin also have a pi rotation, and the final system is not identical to the original one. But if we can consider only a C2 rotation in the lattice degree of freedom, but remain, uh, but keeps the, 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 the spin degree of freedom unchanged, you can see after the rotation, the, the, the system is identical to the, 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 the price one. I'm sorry, this is over, a little bit over rotated. <laughs> so this rotation is actually not permitted in magnetic group, but it is the symmetry operation of the original system. So this is the uh, key spirit of the uh, spin group. Okay, so I think the people in this room will not get confused, but I will still uh, note about the terminology. So when we are talking about spin group, actually we are talking about spin crystalline group, as all we, I said, uh, in this talk and uh, I think later in the, this morning. Because in group theory, mathematically, uh, the terminology is of spin group is already defined. Actually, it is mathematically defined as the double cover. I th uh, I, I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with, with this. The double cover of the special orthogonal group, SON, right? So the spin two is called spin group. It's just SO2 and spin three is, is SO2, but I think it's, uh, uh, we, we, the people in this room in condensed matter will not get this confused. 
Okay, so the next part is the features of spin point and spin space group. So first of all, we know that we need to write down a symmetry element of the spin group uh, by separating the spin and lattice uh, operation, including proper rotation and uh, improper rotation. I sorry, this uh, 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 terminology is followed by uh, the, the Litton's work in 1970s, uh, and he did a nice mathematical derivation that there are in total 598 types of spin point groups. And this is contains almost all the current progress of spin space, uh, of spin group theory. But we know that compared with the other group, which are already completely explored in textbooks, the spin group is far from explored. So we have still several theories to explore. For example, the, spin, the classification of spin point groups for specific magnetic configuration. For example, the collinear configuration or coplanar configuration in which our physicists are in, actually interested. And the classification of all the spin space groups, we have 230 space groups and uh, uh, 1651 magnetic groups, but how many classification of uh, spin space groups do we have? And also the reprinting theory of spin space groups, at last, the application of the spin group. What can we do with this enhanced uh, symmetry group, for example, in spintronics, for example, in uh, topology? And uh, I think we will uh, explore a little bit more on these points. Okay, so first of all, we derive all the classification of spin groups for the non-collinear uh, spin arrangements and the non-coplanar uh, non spin arrangements. I think uh, if you get a good memory, so we already introduced this morning about the uh, spin-only group and the, uh, the non-trivial spin group. So spin-only group means that you have the only spin operations without any lattice nice operations, and this is very important in uh, spin groups. So the copanner, we have this uh, Z2K spin only group. K means uh, conjugate operator, which is uh, a pi degree of spin rotation followed by uh, time reversal. And uh, the copanner, uh, besides Z2K group, we also have a SO2 uh, continuous group because the spin can rotate along this, the, 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 the axis freely. And at the end of the day, we have the 252 uh, cop. Uh, spin point groups for coplanar magnetic configurations and the 90 uh, spin point groups for collinear uh, magnetic configurations. Then we did something about uh, uh, representative theory of the spin space group, which is uh, uh, the, the representation of a single, uh, uh, of a little group of an arbitrary K point of an arbitrary uh, spin space group. Let me take uh, this uh, example uh, of this Kagomi lattice wheel. And the spin orientation is just uh, the same spin orientation of the uh, compound, I think, among these three uh, teen. Okay, so without magnetic order and without spin coupling, we can see this Kagomi lattice shows a very typical uh, Kagomi band. We have, uh, dark band we, ca we have dark cones, we have fat bands, we have Van Gogh similarities. And we add, if we add this kind of uh, copanar magnetic order and some Degeneracy is unlifted. For example, this 4 4 degeneracy is unlifted to uh, 1 plus 2 plus 1. So, how do we understand this fact in terms of uh, representative theory? So, in group theory, we have the cap capability uh, relations, but we cannot use the magnetic space group to describe this because in magnetic groups, this, this uh, uh, system only has a D2 symmetry, which means all the uh, Irreducible representations are one dimensional. So then we have to uh, develop the uh, spin space group and its co representations of all the little groups of the uh, specific k point, for example, the, 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 the k value. And uh, at last, we have uh, obtained the capability of the spin space group with non magnetic group as, uh, as well as uh, magnetic group. And we can see clearly this 4 4 degeneracy can be split to one plus two plus one. And if you further uh, add spin counting term, and this uh, two fold degeneracy will pass, will, 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 will become non-degenerate, will split. And we also have uh, this, uh, uh, all the uh, co uh, reconciled theory uh, of the spin space groups and the work is, uh, uh, is in preparation. Okay, 
So, uh, so next, let's discuss some uh, applications of spin group uh, symmetry. So after the uh, spin group was first proposed in 1960s and 1970s, there are only very uh, limited or scattered works on this uh, topic. Uh, for example, the normal theory of phase transition and the neutral scattering and the electron states of spiral magnets. And uh, recently, about uh, five to uh, two years ago, before 2022, uh, I think with the benefit of the progress of antiferromagnetic spintronics, a lot of people realized that, realized that there were some uh, interesting uh, spin group symmetries can lead to some effect uh, of spell coupling. For example, spin spitting in AFM systems and spin hall effect and other effects. And we think about, so since that the spin group can have a lot more symmetries compared with the uh, typical uh, Central groups, it must have some applications or, or generations or extensions for the topological phase of matter. So, the first one I will introduce is this Kramsky degeneracy and the Z2 topological phases. So, the Kramsky degeneracy is you only have two requirements. One, the symmetry operator should be anti unitary, and the second one, square two minus one. So, in the SOC system, the timbers of symmetry just perfectly fulfill these two requirements so it can protect Kramer's symmetry. And such uh, Kramer's degeneracy, sorry, and such degeneracy at the trim point can have twofold, twofold spin degeneracy and lead to two different types of surface states. It's all about band connectivity. We have two different types of band connect connectivity here and here, corresponding to topological trivial and topological non-trivial phases. So that is basically the idea of the Z2 topological classification. And we just expand all these symmetries and, and check in, uh, within the regime of spin group, how many symmetries can fulfill, can, can be the symmetry that protect degenerate, uh, uh, Kramer's degeneracy and that Z2 topological classification. And we have seven symmetries with the blue background is the symmetry also allowed in magnetic space groups. For example, the first one is time reversal followed by a, a half translation. So this is just a famous uh, symmetry recently predicted by uh, Joe Moore and for the AFM topological insulators. And uh, recently, uh, uh, a famous material system is Mountney's Basimus 2, Tangorim 4, just belongs to this case. And also, the time reversal can combine a uh, guide mirror uh, symmetry to uh, to protect uh, Z2 classification. And the other five only exist in the regime of uh, spin uh, space groups. And I will take two of them as an example to illustrate how do they protect the Z2 topology. Okay, so we write the tight binding model of this kind of AFM structure. And uh, 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 at the beginning, we have these two kinds of uh, symmetries. One is time reversal followed by a lattice mirror. So, because the, the mirror contains uh, uh, the, the, the pi degree rotation, but we do not couple a spin rotation. And the other one couples uh, a time reversal and the spin rotation and also a half translation. So, if we have both symmetries, the expected surface states by symmetry arguments should have a surface node line, not surface uh, drag code. And the calculated surface states also uh, repeated the, ex uh, the expectation. So, if we break the first symmetry, by just do a magnetic tilting along the, uh, for example, x direction. So the expected surface drag cone will become a surface, uh, sur surface node line will become a surface drag cone, and the calculated surface states also uh, repeated the, the, uh, the symmetry arguments. And then if we further break the other symmetry by slightly uh, increase the, the, the layer dependence, so it becomes a trivial insulator, and our uh, calculation shows that there is a, a band surface band gap at the drag cone. Okay, so I think that's, that's the pro improvement of that the uh, Z2 topological phases are indeed protected by these two spin group symmetries. And the second one is the drag side metal with uh, chirality. So first, let me uh, remind you the conventional drag side metal. A conventional drag side metal is protected by PT symmetry. So the drag point is a full full degenerate bed composed by two linear dispersing uh, doubly degenerate bands. 
And since the dark comb is uh, protected by PT symmetry, it is composed of two well combs with opposite chirality, plus one and minus one. So plus one uh, at minus one is zero, so a dark comb cannot be chiral, so it is non-chiral. So as a result, the surface states, typically a Fermi ring, are actually not topologically protected because the dark comb do not have a topological charge. So uh, we think about if, oh, sorry, we think about if we can have a dark side metal with, uh, with a certain chirality, but, uh, but this cannot be true within the regime of magnetic space groups. But if we consider a collinear AFM structure with this type four magnetic space group, in the spin space group regime, we can have a uh, dark side metal. Uh, it has three interesting uh, symmetries. The first one is uh, uh, a spin uh, rotation of pi degree followed by a half translation along the x direction. The second one is uh, a same symmetry but uh, along the y direction. And the third one is uh, a free rotation, SO2 rotation along the z direction. Interestingly, these three uh, symmetry uh, uh, operators just form a gen generators of the SO2 the algebra for an arbitrary k point. This means two things. The first of all, this system has a hidden SO2 symmetry written like this. The second thing is, in this material, every band is twofold degenerate. So it is not an outer magnet. Every band is twofold degenerate. The third thing, oh, I just said there are two things. There are actually, there are third things. The third thing is that the doubly degenerate uh, bands indeed have topological charges. Are, uh, compared with the conventional uh, dark side metal. Because the symmetry connected to the two well comb are actually this, uh, uh, oh, sorry, this uh, uh, translation symmetry. So they, the two well comb have actually the same topological charge here. Two well combs uh, have the same chirality because they are connected by this uh, hidden SO2 symmetry, which is uh, uh, unitary. And, as a result, it will have robust Fermi arcs other than the uh, Fermi rings not topologically, topologically protected. And the different surfaces will have different kind of uh, surface, uh, surface states because the surface can either broken the SO2 symmetry or preserve the SO2 symmetry. Okay, that is the materialization. Uh, we go through the uh, magnetic materials of the Bilbao solar. Uh, which is more than uh, 1,600, and finally uh, find more than 60 materials that uh, have all the symmetries required for a chiral dioxide metal. So this is the cobalt uh, niobium sulfide. It's a representative material. Uh, at the limit of uh, uh, no smell coupling, we can have, they have, the, all the bands are two-fold degenerate, and there are clear linear crossings with two drag points, but with chirality plus two and minus two. Okay, and we told our uh, experiment collaborators to do the RPAS uh, because the Fermi arcs is the best way to, to, to resolve the Fermi arcs is actually the RPAS. So uh, our RPAS collaborators found these two straight lines here by using different uh, uh, photo energy, which means we can control the KZ dispersion. And these two, two lines of this uh, uh, surface band means that this electron pocket actually has a two-dimensional nature, not three-dimensional bulk nature. And highly just suggesting it is from a surface state. And we do DFT calculation from the magnetic cell and get uh, uh, good uh, agreements with uh, uh, the RPS measurements and uh, confirm that this kind of electron pocket is actually the Fermi arc surface state of this kind of uh, chiral arc uh, same metal. And we know that the most uh, interesting thing of this material is actually the mysterious enormous Hall effect, given that it is a collinear uh, AFM with a little bit uh, FM canting. And we also have an uh, uh, explanation of this enormous Hall uh, within the uh, scenario of carrier dioxide metal. But I think due to the time limit, I will not. Uh, oh, oh, it's uh, sorry, already. It's over. How long do I have? Oh, we'll still have four minutes? Okay. Oh, so next is a, a quick summary on what is next. So, in this work, 
with systematic investigator century description of this uh, magnetic materials in the SOC free uh, limit, which is a uh, spin cruise group or spin groups. So uh, I, I think I can uh, convince you that the spin uh, group has a lot more new symmetry because it decouples spatial and uh, uh, spin uh, operations. So of course it have new symmetry operations, new degeneracies, and new quasi particles. And as a result, we have new topological phases and new topological classifications, either in electron systems or in magnum systems. So in magnum systems, we, we can also use spin groups to, to as this network shown, to, to do the, to find the new topological classifications. And also, I think uh, the topic of this uh, workshop as a lot of networks today, we have spintronic effects without the assistance of spin coupling, but with the uh, uh, effective magnetic field induced by the magnetic order. And at last, we have a good, it is a good starting point to investigate uh, if the effects of spin of coupling in magnetic uh, materials. And speaking about uh, spintronics, actually, we have uh, already a lot of uh, good talks about uh, this uh, outer magnetism by uh, labor and other uh, people, and also spin spating talk, spin hall effect, and turning magno resistance uh, as, 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 as a good application. I will not uh, discuss about it uh, to save time. Okay, this, I think this is the last slide. I will, dis I, I will show you another experimental collaboration of our uh, 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 nice spin r pass result, which is a plate-like spin spating in a non co planar antiferromagnetic magnus tan red 2. This can be viewed as, as uh, Thomas said, as an uh, 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 analog, non co planar analog of outer magnets. So the DFT results show that on this uh, uh, spatial uh, high symmetry plane, you have this uh, AFM induced spin spating and this kind of plate-like spin spating. And our uh, spin r pass shows that, uh, for example, along the cut one and the cut two shows that the, the SX, SX component is symmetric uh, along the kx axis and anti-symmetric along the ky axis. And so is the cut three and cut four. This nice r pass results together with uh, uh, our uh, DFT calculation uh, have good agreement shown that this may be the uh, uh, first uh, experimental uh, mer uh, measurement of this uh, spin spating effect induced by AFM order, and this work is uh, uh, now under review uh, in nature. Okay, so at last I will uh, acknowledge all my collaborators, including uh, uh, Professor Xian Gang Wai. He is the first discoverer of the Wilson metal in Nanjing University, and also my uh, collaborators in SASAC for RPAS and neutron diffraction. And this work are done by these uh, uh, brilliant uh, PhD and postdoc students. And uh, okay, so we also have two posters. One is about antiferromagnetic train insulators. The key point is here. How can you keep the, how can you get the train insulator phase without breaking the symmetries that connecting two different sub lattices to make it uh, rigorously antiferromagnetic magnetic material. And the second one is uh, what I just mentioned, the observation of this spating in the co uh, antiferromagnetic. I hope you will enjoy these po posters. Okay, I think time is also up. So thank you for your attention.